Hello, everyone, and welcome to Momentum Boost. I am, of course, your host, Adrian Gold Davis, and I am delighted, but not as delighted as you're going to be, that you joined us tonight because in this episode, we are really in for a boost because we're speaking with Mayor Kay. He is an internet sensation. He's amassed more than 350 million views on YouTube for his inspirational vlogs and interviews. So most of you know that a core value at Momentum is our commitment to unity and mutual responsibility. And at the foundation of that principle lies a commitment to a life of joy and connection to all people. And it's ultimately rooted in that most famous of statements by the great Hillel, love your neighbor as yourself. That which is hateful to you, do not do unto your neighbor. This is the whole of Torah. The rest is commentary. Now go and learn. So Hillel's famous statement, of course, is known around the world as the golden rule. In this age of multimedia opportunities to reach out and touch someone, Mayor Kay, he's built a platform for this very principle. His creative soul and his passion for spreading love has taken social media from what it is as an often narcissistic vehicle simply for self-promotion into its greatest manifestation, its greatest opportunity, which is a vehicle for lifting others. And Mir's wisdom, well, it comes from his traditional Jewish roots and his life and his journey has been a somewhat unconventional path, winding through yeshiva and rabbinical school, and then to living out his Jewish values by traveling the world, by creating film and video, and by truly finding himself and living his dream. And we, of course, are the grateful beneficiaries of his personal journey. Watch as you scroll through his videos and you just, oh. anyway, before I bring him on, I really want you to watch this one of his videos, which went viral during the height of the pandemic. I think you're gonna enjoy it. watched it, I don't know, if you have 10 million views, 900, 999,000 of them are mine. 
it just, and, and I'm weepy again. How did you yeah. feel? Before I ask you, you know, the questions I plan to ask you, I just need to know how you felt in that moment, literally holding the world in your arms. Wow, I, I get goosebumps myself. And I, I just want to first say thank you so much for having me and sharing your platform with me. I'm really, I'm really grateful. Um, that day stands out in one of the most powerful days I've ever experienced, truly, in, in my life and definitely filming. Um, as you mentioned, it was definitely it was the height of the pandemic, as well as there was a lot of violence taking place out in the Middle East and Israel. And uh, there was a, so much, uh, so much just like hatred being written about. Jewish people and and um, just a lot of bias and uh, I wanted to come out and share my voice in a positive way but I was so I just didn't know what to do I was overwhelmed and by the grace of God um, I really prayed like, like how can I go about and not just like add the voice to like we're not this we're not that or what we should be doing but like how can I just like peel back a layer deeper and and just show like we're you know yes we're different but yet we're human and we all deserve love and like how do I bring it all into a simple video and like, yeah, Hashem, God just like planted this idea within my head and, and, uh, and to be out there vulnerable the way it was, and it was dangerous where I was standing a week before people were getting beaten up and ended up in the hospital. Um, and behind the scenes, I actually tried to get some security. Some of my old friends from the IDF to come and just like be, like, to be there, but it ended up being so spontaneous. No one was able to be there. So I just like said, God, you know, <laughs> just watch over me as I try to go ahead and do this. And um, it was the most humbling beautiful experience of my life. Um, I needed a hug as much as anybody else did at that time. And so I think it was coming from a deep place of just wanting to connect as well. And uh, to be out there vulnerable as I was and to connect with people in such a state, uh, it, was, it was powerful. And I felt it in their hugs. I felt it in the words that they shared with me. And I mean, what you see is only a quarter of the hugs that I received that day. And uh, it, was, it was special from all walks, all backgrounds, Jewish, non-Jewish, all from around the world. Uh, what's beautiful about the hug is it's international. You know, you don't, there's no words that need to be, it's, it's just there. And enough is said in that, in that, in that moment. So um, I, yeah, I was full of gratitude and, and bliss and humility to be able to be the vehicle to spread that message. Now, this is something you probably wouldn't have noticed, but of course, I don't know why I kept obsessing on it. I watched as you hugged people and, you know, you probably have to watch it again to see it, but you can see your bicep flex every time you hug someone. Oh. I know that sounds ridiculous, but I could feel it moving through you because when we really hug, it takes a koach, a strength. And your arm kept flexing through it in that, you know, pristine white shirt, you could still see the strength moving through it. I found it extraordinary moving, but what I, don't, what I need to know is, did you expect, there must've been a part of you that knew that you were onto something using social media as a way of spreading love between people, but did you, did anything prepare you for the outrageous success? <laughs> like really? Wow. Yeah, that I mean, I just want to comment, first of all, how perceptive you are on that detail. And that's really cool. Um, I didn't notice at the time, but now that you mentioned it, I do remember like, yeah, A, being held by people, but also holding people when that was needed. And that was really special. And for that particular video, I, I had a feeling, I had a gut feeling that it was just the way it came to me and how organic it just it just, it sort of flowed. It, and the timing of it all, I just knew it was going to do well and people were going to receive it well. I had no idea that it would get the amount of attention it did in the short amount of time and, and who would be sharing it, all types of different influential, like, yeah, politicians and actors and just, and, and everybody in between. And every, every, it seemed like every human being was just sharing this video. So I had no idea that it would have such an impact. And again, humbled by that. Um, and then sometimes I had, I had feelings throughout my career um, when videos would hit, I'm like, yeah, this is going to be a good one. And it would. But also there were times where I was like, this is such a great idea. Like, why didn't it go viral? Like, I don't get it. So, um, you know, it's, 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 it's hit and miss uh, sometimes with that. You could do as much as one can and put the effort in, but the outcome, as I've been learning throughout my career, uh, is really out of my hands. I just got to do the best I can. I believe that's a mission, isn't it? It's not incumbent upon you to complete the task, <laughs> nor are you forgetting to begin <laughs> from the beginning. <laughs> yes, I think I, I read that somewhere. Mayor, I'm going to ask you another question. You, the, the mayor that stood in that street looked like yeah. a yeshiva boy. 
And yeah. the mirror I'm talking to now looks like a deadhead, to be frank. You know, so <laughs> like, I, I'm just, yeah. which is fine. I'm just, yeah. I'm curious to know yeah. why you chose to dress the way you did in the video, as opposed to just like any random dude standing there. Yeah, it's a great question. And, 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 and people have asked me that from different parts of the aisle, you know, some a bit more aggressively. I, I love hearing from you in a more compassionate, interesting, curious way. Um, so, and, and I guess the answer to that is, is that uh, that mayor white shirt sits us out, yarmulke on, is, the same, is part of who I am as wearing this tie-dye shirt as well. And, um, and, to, and I never lived by the way of being boxed in. And I think we could hold space for all the different parts of ourselves. So, um, so that's a, it's part of who I am. I didn't feel like a friar in any sense of the world. Number two, particularly in this type, when the world was happening and, and especially Orthodox Jews were being attacked um, in a very obvious way. Those who were wearing kippahs and, 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 and sits us on the outside. So it was important for me to show the world that yes, we may look a certain way um, and there may be a, a certain narrative as to what Orthodox Judaism um, hold by or stand for or, or isolated and, and, and don't love people, whatever that may look like or they live in their own bubble. It was important for me to say that, no, that's not true. There may be a sect of people that show up that way as individuals, but as a people, we're loving, we're kind, we want peace, um, we want to be held in love. So it was important for me to show show up in that mannerism, in that you know way, so people could understand that. Because ultimately, we are visual people, and most people don't know the nuances in that. So, so essentially, you 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 chose that particular part of the many manifestations of mayor um, to represent what was politically going on at the time. Um, and, and it fascinates me because, you know, obviously there's a little disconnect between that uniform that most people see as separate standoff, don't touch that, right? And, and otherwise, and yet, I think it was because of that, that people were drawn to you. The um, conversation you had with the woman who, was, who said she was a Muslim, um, did you feel in that moment, I mean, I, I, I know that there are many, many people who, who issue the kind of love language you use. They think somehow there has to be a more um, cerebral, more kind of aggressive approach to making peace. But as you continue to do this, are you more or less committed to a loving approach? Oh man, I'm sold. I'm sold on a loving approach. I. I think gullus uh, or exile is when we think we're separate from one another. That is, the, I think, the, one of the deep meaning of it. It's like when we think we're not connected. We're all connected to source. I, I believe, you know, we all believe in. I believe in one God, one source, and then we're all fragments. All those souls that we see in each other, or that all human beings are part of that source. And, and every living being, to be honest, animal, plant. Uh, so we're all when we think we're dis when we're we're not part of that source. When you are different from I or um, we allow those differences to get in the way where we can even get to a place of harming one another. It's like having a bad ankle and like, and then like stomping on your foot. It's like, what are you like, what's that going to help your ankle? So too, I believe we're all part of the same quote unquote body. And, um, and I think the loving approach is the way, and that's shown even to today, you know, back in the day, there was a bit more violent approaches when it came to education, right? The, I, I didn't, wasn't around for that, but the fingers and they would hit the tops and like, ouch. Um, parenting as well. And now we've realized that uh, having more of a loving, accepting approach to our students, to our children, uh, is, is a way to keep that door open and to, and to have a deep, meaningful conversation and to have see real growth. So I, I'm a firm believer, no matter how much, um, uh, how many voices may say otherwise, that uh, love and respect is, is a way to, to unity and to uh, making this world that much more brighter. It seems to me, actually, that you're also, what you're talking about is a metaphor for self-discovery. I mean, I suspect given your traditional background that there wasn't a lot of opportunities to express your creative soul in the way you might have wanted to. And so as such, there might've been many different potentially disunifying components to your personality that you had to find a voice for. And your family likely had to be able to hear and embrace that voice as well. What do you say to other people who find themselves in a situation that doesn't quite express the many shades of themselves mm. so that That's they might find that way? 
Yeah. Um, oh, my, and a shout out to all those who have uh, the voice within them still stuck and, they, and, they're, and they're finding a way to get it out there. I, I commend you and, and send lots of support vibrational leads that you, you can be able to step in. It takes a lot of courage to be able to do that, especially when the people around you in your inner circle are now supporting that. Um, yeah, well, to, to echo what you said, growing up in a more orthodox community, <clears throat> it's very much limited to how one could go about living their life or how they could go about, <clears throat> excuse me, expressing themselves. And uh, it was like, you know, it was, I was swimming against the current for quite a while and still do at times. Uh, and always challenge us to like, what is the right approach or what is, what is my voice and how do I go about expressing it in the right way? And, uh, and for me, it was just, uh, it was really truly believing. It was a passion. It was just a gut feeling. And for some time I was trying to balance it for a while and, but not fully showing up at my full power. And then once I started to understand, you know, this, it's, a, it's our tradition as well, that each and every one of us is a special energy. Our birthday is such a special day. Uh, because it's, it's God's way of saying that you matter and that there was an energy in this world that could not have, the world couldn't keep us spinning without you in it. So if I needed to be like, you know, the guy next to me, um, then why am I here? So obviously there's a certain nuance in my way of being and my story that could be shared in a certain way. So I really firmly believe that. And every time, I love this quote that says, doubting yourself is doubting your creator. Every time I, if I doubt myself, and it's not me who I'm, I'm doubting my soul and who created me is God. God didn't know what his plan was. So um, that really gives me the strength to keep on going, even when there's, you know, naysayers. But thank God over the time, um, you know, people have gone around and, and started to realize that what I'm trying to do is it's positive and it comes from a good place. And so I'm grateful for that. And for those who aren't in that flow yet or they doubt themselves or have resistance, um, I think it's, you know, to, to thyself be true, you know, is to really understand, like, take a moment to, and if you have already, to really realize where is that coming from? Where do you want it? Why do you want to share? Where is that coming from? What do you hope to achieve? And uh, if those things check off well in your box, and I also do have a mentor. I do have people close to me who I bounce off ideas. You know, hey, am I on the right path? Sometimes it get to one's head. So I am human too. Uh, but if you, you know, if you have your inner circle, you're starting five and you know yourself that you're on the right path and like, man, go for it. There's always going to be resistance. I think it's God's way of saying that this matters. If it's easy than quote unquote, everybody will doing it. So uh, there, there, shall, there should be resistance. Um, and that's the way for us, for you, the creator, the person, for me to realize like, wait, think for a second, is this what I want to do? Okay, I do. Let's go for it. And that's, you know, and then, and then go for it and burn the bridges, you know, and go, 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 go. You know, I want to go back for a minute to the video again. I, I think about it and, and it moves me so much. Were there any particular um, interactions you had during the course of that day of those loving hugs that became more personal than just a hug insofar as did anyone share with you what they were going through in that moment, why they needed you for them at that moment, that you were put there, momish for them in that moment. Did you hear any personal stories and how does that affect you? Yeah, um, what's really, in, those, in that moment, in those moments, there were, there were, it was a lot of touch and go. Um, the moment of the hug was, was quite powerful. There was one or two people who I was surprised to afterwards realize like who they were. I was like, you know, I was blindfolded, I couldn't see. So some hugs stood out from others. And for example, one of the video, in the video, you can see this really tall, large man. And uh, he gave me the softest hug and I felt enveloped in his arms. So that was really, I felt held in that one. And he, and he said some, you know, some really beautiful words of encouragement, which didn't end up going through the video but it was uh, really special. We talked for a little bit and he expressed how he, um, he I believe he comes from the, the, the Muslim tradition as well, um, religion. And he was just all about love and like expressing the unity rather than the, the differences that we have in our, in our practice. And that was just really beautiful and encouraging to hear. A lot of that, what you're asking me came in after the fact when I got thousands of messages from around the world. And in those moments, people have more time to be able to sit right and I'm able to respond and in those in those correspondences like that really hit deep like that was there were some i mean from around the world from libya syria from all over yeah. the arab countries from, from places from australia to canada i mean I, I feel like the whole world was in my inbox and people really opened up and they shared in great detail as to their own troubles whether it was connected to the middle east and to the to the violence that was happening there or in their own personal lives through the pandemic how much they just felt like they got a hug through the video through whether it's families who uh, family members who passed away, 
uh, through the isolation, through the depression, through the new addictions that they've discovered for themselves. I mean, it was just like raw humanity right there. Just like no, all walls down, like here I am. And thank you for this video because it, 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 it shook me to my core and I needed to be shooken by, you know, I, I just felt so numb for all these months, all the, for these past year. And, and it really, um, some people said to save their lives. I mean, what do you say to that? Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's wild. And I'm great. <laughs> How old I pray, are you? I pray to get 32. You? You're 32. 32. Yeah. 1990. 1990. Yeah, very good. Yes. yes. Yeah. Wow. You know, I, it, you're now embellic of, of, of the possibilities that's out there. And I think that people's response to you also has to do with your vibrational energy because, you know, you're, you're a gentle soul and and you can feel that i wonder given your circuitous path to you know social media stardom when you think back to you know your yeshiva years and 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 the rabbinical kind of training are there any like proverbs or any any particular quotes you know that really rang true for you and sort of fed into this desire I mean, I chose that Hillel one at the beginning, uh, out of deference to your education. Are there any others that really stick to you that are like mantras for you now? You know, it's great. <laughs> As you were saying, I'm like, oh, shuck, she took it. <laughs> uh, you said, yeah, you said it. Um, well, it's, it's it's a simple one, and I, uh, it's worth just you know repeating because it really is. It really is my. It's really the one that I live by, which is Um, You know, and and for me, loving you know loving my neighbor as myself. It, there's so many levels to that, right? There's this kindness, there's respect. There's also like this whole quote unquote new movement, which I think is beautiful about self love, right? To love someone else, you have to understand what it means to love thyself to be able to 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 share that love with somebody else, which has been the deeper work that I'm personally I'm working on these days. Is like this, you know, for me to get a little vulnerable here is to like how easy it is easier for me to tap in and show compassion and love to others. But then for me to receive that has been a, has been its own, you know, its own journey. So um, I, I love that very much um, to be able to like show up in that. And I love that's the golden rule, as you mentioned. And, uh, and that literally that I believe the whole Torah comes from that. We get so caught up in the nuance and like in the black hat, how, how low is the brim and how long are the tits, which are all important and good. And I think it's amazing. Um, but then if you're like, judging someone because it's not the same as you like where does that show up in the in the principles that were brought up and so that's that's really a big one for me um and i and i truly live by and everything else is commentary um so i i just want to really run with that one i do love you know i do love the mark it's not necessarily uh from the Tibet, from the torah but it's like uh there are two important days of a person's life the day they were born and the day they find out why mark twain said that and I, and I just love that because A, it shows a purpose, um, you matter. And I talk to a lot of teenagers where there's a lot of depression and, and suicidal ideation in that. And it's so important to drive home that, that, that piece of information that you are important. And then also that the, it's a journey, right? The second question is like, what's our why? And that takes a lifetime and we never really get there. And, and perfectionism is not what we're aimed to do. And that's where the angels and we are, and we are humans. So, I, but, I, and then generally to end, end it off, I do get a lot of my inspiration and my focus uh, from the leadership of the Lubavitcher Rebbe, the Rabbi Menachem Mendel Sherson, I grew up Chabad. So there was a lot in his wisdom and his teachings, the way he showed up in the world with unconditional love, Jew or non-Jew, Orthodox or not, how he would spend time and quality uh, focus with each and every individual. And he also had the idea of to not just create followers, but he was all about empowering the leader to be a leader of leaders which I try to also incorporate within my messaging. Like, don't just like click the follow button and just like stand back, but like, here are ways that you too can go about in your community and make a, an impact in the world. So that's, that's really what I'm trying to do too. Well, clearly you're being very successful. I just want to go back for one minute to the whole notion of not being able to love others without loving the self. My, my notion and understanding of that quote is that we do on some fundamental level have a have a kind of ability to tolerate in ourselves that which we don't tolerate in others. So even on the surface level, if you were able to say, um, I'm going to tolerate in my neighbor that which I can make excuses for myself, that would be enough, that would be Dayenu. But in terms of actually loving yourself, you are exactly at the age um, where I remember this journey began for me. And so I'm curious, 
you said that it's been a process for you to find that self-love. Do you remember how old you were when you first weren't sure if you felt love for yourself? Oh, that's a great question. Um, I think it's 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 come to a lot more. It's the this part of my of my journey and the locking of self, so I'm able to even show up more powerfully in the world. Is more of a recent. I've past couple of years. I would say that's more prevalent in my own like you know frontal cortex, if that makes sense. So I, I'm more aware of it now. I would say in the past, yeah, maybe two three years um, than before. And I understand that it's a process to you know delayering the self and to realize you know what that may look like, where that showed up, how so, and that's like, you know, that's the therapeutic meditation, you know, approach. Um, and uh, I'm excited for it. I'm excited for it. You know, I, I you know, I, I used to believe that my being sensitive was a hindrance and now I realize it's my superpower. Um, and I never really understood why I would be able to show up in a room and just pick up on the energy and understand why I spoke to this person, that person, and why people gravitate to talking to me and they open up so quickly is because there's a certain energy, thank God, as a gift and that they sense from me. And so instead of growing up and like sort of, you know, growing up in that masculine, toxic masculinity, where it's like, don't show one's feelings or, you know, or sensitivities was pushed, being sensitive was pushed down, uh, not respected or, or cured for in, uh, in family dynamics or in schooling systems as well. Um, especially amongst boys one's age, you know, that's where bullying sort of, you know, get, you get primed out to be bullied. Uh, that's, that's all part of the journey to realize, like, to rediscover, like, wow, how, how lucky I am that I'm dry clean only, you know, I'm at sense, you know, there's different types of clothing. And as my mentor said, tells me there's, you know, regular clothing you throw into the wash. That's great. And there's also dry clean only, which is a little more sensitive. You got to go a certain process. So I'm dry clean only. I just got to go through with, you know, my process of cleansing and cleaning and showing up is a little different from others wow. and that's okay. It's beautifully articulated, Mayor, beautifully. I'm going to give you this last moment for a personal message. Talk to the young men who are not quite there yet, who have not figured out how to use their voice. Tell them how to hold on and give them some wisdom to trust that they can listen to that still soft voice inside of themselves and know that it's all good. Mm. Yeah, wow. There's, you know, mm, I think the most courageous thing one can do in life is to ask for help. And especially you mentioned men. So I think men, I, I know myself and, and the people around me, it's hard for us to ask for help. And uh, by let, allowing other people to support us, we support them. And it's a two way street and, we'll, and then that will just continue. We'll be able to support others when they need support. And I think that's where, you know, that, that collective, that unity shows up is that when we show up for each other, that's how we thrive and grow rather than to move fast by oneself, to go far, to do it with a group. And that too, there was a lot of ego along the journey to realize I got to do it all myself and to let go and like realize that it's really it takes the community. It takes, and it takes God partnering up with God, that faith to do that. So to the young man who's out there listening or young person, I'd say, a hey, ask for help if you need it. And it's okay if you don't have all the answers right away. If you don't even hear the voice within, it takes some, it takes a long time. You know, if you're 22, 35, 42, 12, for those amount of years till now, this very moment, you've been living a certain way. So how, I mean, it's years and years of living a certain, you know, certain, in a certain, certain way, a certain dimension. So it'll take some time to like be able to rediscover one's voice. But if you're already asking the question, if you're here listening to this, then obviously your soul, you know, you're looking for something and you're a seeker. And to embrace that and um, not to feel lost, but to be on a journey. And how exciting is that? You know, someone told me, uh, a mentor of mine told me that uh, fear is excitement without breath. Ooh. And uh, one more time, fear is excitement without breath. And uh, when we find ourselves in fear, we can switch that by just taking a, a deep breath and, uh, and to just allow ourselves to land. And this may all sound like a little jargon to you. I've been doing this for some time, but to, to find other people, to, to, to listen, literally listen to your heart, to your soul and, um, and pray to God to you know, send the guides to you, reach out to those mentors, to your friends. Be the first one to be vulnerable. That takes a lot of guts. But when you do, I found in my experience that other people will find more comfort in you and, and share, and you'll realize you're not alone, which you're not. You're really not alone. 
Um, and I, that's, I want you to know is you're not alone. Yeah. Wow. You know, I'm sure the great Marianne Williamson wrote for Nelson Mandela that when we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give permission to others to do the same. Thank you for letting your light shine, Mayor Kay. You are, yeah. you are a sanctification of all that is good. It was really an honor to listen to you today. Honestly, I don't know why I just look at you and I feel like weeping. It's bizarre. I think it's a mother thing. What can I say? I'm giving you an air hug through the computer. Give me your arm. Received. Received. Okay, and got I, it. I got it. Mayor, thank you. May you go from strength to strength, from viral to viral. May this become a continued way for you to express your beautiful holy soul. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. And blessings to you. This has been one of my top uh, conversations in quite some time. You're a really fantastic interviewer and you really know how to hold space. So thank you so much for that. Thank you for bless this opportunity. Your heart. Thank you, my <laughs> friend. God bless you. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> I told you guys. I told you guys. I don't know what's wrong with me. I cannot stop crying. I'm like a big baby. Probably have mascara under my eyes. Okay. Thank you for joining me. Really. I, I, I loved every minute of this. I am, of course, Adrian Gold Davis. And we are, of course, Momentum. We love each and every one of you. Hugs to all of you out there around the 32 countries around the world. And please remember, as we learn and grow and share and render ourselves vulnerable, that the highest form of wisdom will always be kindness. Good night, everybody. Got a thousand questions coming from deep within. Wanna cut through the clutter? I need to know that my next move matters.